Welcome to Calvary Church, a place of new beginnings. We've come to speak life today. Hallelujah. No weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Come on, sing it out, church. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, sing it, church. You know it this morning. I'm gonna see a victory. I'll see it. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we trust you. Come on, give it to God this morning. Whatever you need. From the beginning of this service, just lift your hands and offer it to the King of Kings. Say there's power, church. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Sing it out. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how the story ends. Oh, sing it out, church. Yes, I know how this story ends. Oh, 
and we lift our hands all across this place and give him glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, Jesus, we love you, Lord. We worship you in this place, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Calvary Church, a place of new beginnings. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. The spirit of the Lord is and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Brother Cameron, would you come? This is Celebrate Sunday and we are going to celebrate our victories today. He has a testimony he wants to share with you this morning. Amen. God is on the rise. He is doing mighty, wonderful things in the last days. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I give thanks to Pastor and to Brandon and Rachel for asking me to share this testimony. Um, just a couple services ago, both of our assistant pastors preached to us, what do they see when they see you and how do they feel when they walk out of your presence? This situation came up to me recently with two different people, both elderly women. Um, I work for a pool service right down the road. First lady um, asked her about the pool and um, went on and on about it until eventually I realized that she was weeping. She began to confess to me that she lost her husband due to cancer only a couple years ago and she had no idea how to work the pool or fix it or just carrying on about it and uh, she confessed to me she's, she's become a, a raging alcoholic and um, confiding in me I just responded with just a simple scripture and after the scripture I just told her I said everything's gonna be just fine because God's got you she was so ecstatic just to find out that I was a Christian she was so hungry to see that someone to actually care about her well-being that didn't know her from Adam I have only spoken to this lady a couple of times and she actually cussed me the last time I was at her house but that just goes to show that if you can be sensitive to other people's situations even though she did me wrong I still said Lord please just let me see what this lady is going through and we talked on and on and eventually she asked me do I go to church I said yes ma'am 805 Sherman Drive and uh, so I've invited her and we're, we're still working on her so I talk to her every week um, so be praying about that situation and then this, this second woman <clears throat> I've never seen this woman but one time peeking at me through her window um, it was the same exact week that this happened with this other woman and she came outside and she just stood there and she watched me and she said how are you I said I'm great how are you she said I'm not she said, my brother died of a heart attack last night and my family, we don't know what to do about it. So <clears throat> she said, but you look like someone that could pray for me. She said, I said, what is your name? She said, my, my last name is Peoples Jones. She said, I get in trouble with that name. And I said, Miss Peoples Jones, I said, we're gonna pray for you. I said, not just me, but I wanna tell my church family to pray for over the family of Peoples Jones because there are hungry people out there. They don't, need, they don't know what they see. They don't see Brandon, they see the God inside of him. They don't see just pastor's flesh. They see the God inside of him. That's what draws them to come to this atmosphere. Matthew 5 and 14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. What do they see in you? Do they see your flesh or do they see the spirit that lives in us? Are we hiding it? Are we hiding the God that we say we love so much? Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. You look like, do you Hallelujah. look like somebody that could pray for somebody else? Is it you that looks like somebody that can pray for someone else? If it's you, then you stand to your feet and you lift your hands and lift you your voice and say, you I'm here. I'll do it. I'll go. Say you take, I'll pray. You take what the Hallelujah. enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, somebody say, use me, Lord. You take what the enemy 
be meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Say you take praise to You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Only Jesus can You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for God. Hallelujah. We you My mother, Kim, raise your hand real high. Works at a school up in Sanger. And it's my understanding that this beautiful couple sitting next to them this morning encountered her at school. This is Grace and Steve. Grace and Steve, wonderful. We met them pre-service in the office. And she asked... Uh, Kim, are you a faith-believing Christian? Because you look like one. It's because what do people see when they see you? As Brother Cameron said, you look like somebody that could pray for me. And I hope that when people see me, they say, you look like somebody that can change everything through your prayer and supplication unto God. Amen. Grace and Steve, there is no accidents in life. And this is not just happenstance that you are here this morning we have been praying and i have been praying that god would give us a burden for foreign missions <laughs> for home missions amen come on somebody and you're in the house of the lord what we are going to do is we are going to couple our minds together in christ jesus unified by the spirit the lord is going to open doors that are miraculous that the eye cannot see and the ear have yet to hear and there are things happening in the supernatural that only the spirit mind can understand. Sister Bradley, we talked about this this morning. Amen. There are 50 churches that her family has started through the Philippines. Amen. And what was the name pastor of the one city? There's 35 of them in Manila and 15 plus other churches out of the surrounding areas. And today we're going to pray for those churches. I feel revival. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel God wanting to confirm his word in the last days. And this is that which was spoken of by the prophet. There's going to be a great outpouring. But when you plant seed in prayer, God gives increase in the vision in front of you. If you plant seed in your prayer, God will grow everything around you, whether it's your business. Hear me, somebody. Hear me, a company, company owner. We were, we were talking pre-service, just bear with me a minute. And we asked Sister Hudson, what are the needs? And it was reminded to me some of the needs and the needs are great. And I couldn't stand there in the middle of hearing these great needs without knowing that there is a great God. And his name is Jesus. He is wonderful. He is counselor. He is mighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. And in effort and in order for God to do a great work, there must be first a great need. Hear me, saints of Calvary, there are great needs. Misty, come stand by me. You don't have to come up here, but stand, Sister Roark. Stand to your feet, please. Brother Roark, stand with her. In the name of Jesus. I'm asking Church Calvary family, do you want to see great miracles in this last days? Shane reached out to us this week and said that we found out that Misty had breast cancer, had a cancerous lump on her breast, and the Lord is going to heal her as just as he is healing Sister Roark. We stand in faith believing this by the power of the name. Come on, somebody, you believe this with me in the name of Jesus. The Bible says to call on the sick and to call on the name of Jesus and watch the sick recover by the power of his word. We believe it. We believe it. We believe it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I cast out sickness by the power of your word. This is Celebrate Sunday. We celebrate by the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. Come on, saints, lift your voice. Lift your voice unto him. He's doing it right now. Be healed. Let the supernatural heal in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, if there's a need in your body and you're in this house today, be thou healed by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of your testimony, I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak overcoming. In Jesus' name, it is happening right now. It is happening in this place. Faith arise. Faith arise and the enemies are scattered. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody just say yes, Jesus. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered. Be set free. Be set free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a great God whom we serve. There's a great God whom we serve. In unison, let us lift high our hands to the heavens. Scripture says, lift up thine eyes and whence cometh thy help, for thy help comes from the Lord. We need your help in this house this morning. Jesus, there is a somber, sobering spirit of God in this place. We worship you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, in advance, God. Let your word be established. Let your word be established. That's it. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Chains be loosed. A victory. I'm Bonds be broken. A victory. They fall at the name of Jesus. They fall at the name of Jesus. Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Come on, sing it out. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Believe it, say, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory.
my dear friend, Sister Dana Thompson. The lady had come to ladies' conference at a very low, low time, Courtney, in her life, her season. But it was so important for her to be at that conference. And I was sitting by her and she said, Sister Hudson, will you please just get me to Sister Wimberly? She said, I feel like Sister Wimberly has a word for me. So in her feebleness, I walked with her. I got her down to Sister Wimberly and Sister Wimberly sat down by us and Dana didn't say a word. Sister Wimberly just began to minister and she said, young lady, she said, I know you need healing. She said, but let me explain to you, Virginia, what healing is. She said, each and every one of us, Brother Bradley, we want instant healing, instant. I'm back to who I used to be. She said, but Monica, it doesn't always happen that way. She said, but don't you discount God's healing power. It comes through a process and you get better and you get better. But she said, don't you discount, Becky, that true healing is when he just takes you home takes you home with him and you're instantly made whole you're instantly made new so i ask of you today reach out and understand what healing really is all about i love you you can be seated welcome to calvary celebrate sunday what a beautiful day to be in his presence I hope you will join us this Wednesday night right here for Midweek Word and Worship at 7.30 p.m. And next Sunday, everybody say revival with some of my favorite people. They have never preached in this service, but they're from our hometown, Cleburne, Texas. We will have Pastor Dewan and Darla Ashley. They will be here ministering on next Sunday. Then two weeks away. Whoop, whoop. Calvary celebrates women. Give it up. Give it up. Sunday, May the 8th. And I want you to bring a special offering. Think out of the box. What can I do to bring a special offering for Mother's Memorial? So when you give this offering, make for sure you mark it Mother's Memorial. Because Mother's Memorial does so much for the whole global world ministries not just for here in texas not just for in america it is a global thing and we have a video we would like for you to watch it's going to tell you a little bit more about mother's memorial because they organized a bake sale She can learn to organize and lead a worship team. Because he committed to give. She can commit to a Bible study that will change her life. Because this youth group had a car wash. She can wash the feet of her adopted baby because she gave online. She can receive relief from mounting medical bills. Because this family prayed, She can go to Bible school overseas and answer to her prayers. Because they ran a 5K. She can walk into communities.
and build a bridge between cultures. Because of all you do to support Mother's Memorial, she can change the world. Visit ladiesministries.com to find more ways to get involved. Bradley and Sister Bradley, come on up. Bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> It is good to be in the house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Cause I got to praise and I got to let it out. <laughs> it's a praise that can't be denied because God has been so good to me, has opened up doors and made ways. And I just expect God to do greater things. You know, sometimes in the middle of our darkest hour, that we learn the greatest lessons. I know when my son was in the military and in Afghanistan and I was all stressed out, I was worried, you know, I couldn't be there with him, I couldn't, couldn't watch over him. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me one day and said, you don't know enough to worry. If you know the end, then you'd have a right to worry. But you don't know enough. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what God said. I, he knew what he was doing. He knew what was, what was all ahead. He knew how the end was. So that worry thing that's been bugging you, you don't know enough to worry. The battle is the Lord. <laughs> the battle is the Lord. You know how the story ends. We have the victory. All we have to do is stand there and praise him like we got the victory. All you got to do is stand on your feet right now and give him a praise like you got the victory. <laughs> like, I don't know enough, Lord, but you the, you the omniscient God. You the all-knowing God. You the all-seeing God. You know the end from the beginning. So, God, I'm going to trust you with it. <laughs> I'm going to lean on to not my own understanding, but I'm going to lean on you, God. Of I shall see <laughs> the victory. I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe God for the answer. Hey, I'm going to trust you with it, God. So I'm going to lay aside my worries. I mean, it's a battle, but I'm going to lay aside. And I'm going to rejoice. And the words say again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. So just remind yourself to start rejoicing. That you may be in the middle of a battle right now. But rejoice. Paul and Silas in the midnight hour in jail. Paul was the intellect. Paul written, written, you know, over three quarters of the New Testament but yet when that troubled times and he realized hey all my education prowess all that things that I know he began to sing and worship <laughs> he began to sing unto the Lord and things begin to shake those prison walls begin to shake things begin to change when we begin to just worship you can begin to see things change so tonight, today, as we move forward in this service, I want you to make up in your mind that I'm going to worship. It's a new day of worship. I'm going to celebrate him. I'm going to celebrate his goodness. Make up your mind that I'm going to worship till I see something different. <laughs> Those walls are coming down. <laughs> Those walls can't stay. They can't confine me in this prison anymore. I'm going to worship till I see something different. 
and you can see it through the gift of the Holy Ghost. You may need to be filled with the Holy Ghost today, so get ready to receive your gift. Get ready to receive your gift unto the Lord. At this time, we just want to receive a gift. Our ushers are coming, and we want you to find many ways to give today. You can go to the website, click on Secure Give app, do it that way. You can also mail a check to Calvary UPC PO Box 458, then Texas 76202. Many different ways, but we want to find ourselves giving. Man, it is so vital that you understand what keeps these lights on, what keeps the yard mowed, what keeps everything going. It's not just a, a wing and a prayer, but it's by your giving, it's by you being faithful, it's by us making a determination in our mind that we're going to see what God has in store for me. I'm not going to be left out. I'm not going to be left short because he is a God that can do almost, that can do anything in the name of Jesus. Sister Bradley's coming with the proclamation. Let's get behind her. In Isaiah, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That standard is all that he is that standard is all that he has that standard is every victory past present and future he lifts up a standard that's what God does for you and because he lifts up a standard my God we should lift up a praise praise you Jesus for every victory, past, present, and future, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. We're on the winning team. Overcomers. Overcomers. But to be an overcomer, you mu must first overcome something. You have to overcome something and we do it through him that's fighting the battle for us. And he's never lost a battle, never lost a battle. And he's not going to start with yours, 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 not going to start with yours, not going to start with yours, 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 your families. We win. We win. We're at the end of the book. We win. We win. We win. Forever grateful to the God that lifts up a standard. We join together and declare this word over our giving. Upon the authority and by the orders of your word, I am giving and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. I am a tither and giver and I bring my tithe and offerings today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. We live under an open heaven. You pour out upon us such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance interest and income rebates and returns checks in the mail gifts and surprises bills paid off debts dismissed royalties received my greatest desire is that my whole family will be saved and walking with god in perfect health 
abundance and to walk in divine favor and blessings. We're going to be blessed going in. We're going to be blessed going out. And all that we do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. And we say it is so and so it is. Come on, give God a praise if you believe that. And so it is. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we declare it and decree it over our lives. Father, we thank you for these that are given today. We thank you for those that are giving online. We, we thank you that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could possibly ask or even think. God, we give you the glory in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Give us unto the Lord. You may be seated as a I should receive your gifts. It is time for us to move higher and take our worship to the next level. So let's do it and be obedient unto the Spirit of God. Who am I that the highest King would well But he brought me in for oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free in me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free.
Somebody clap your hands right now unto the Lord. Yes, glory God. I am who you say I am. Hallelujah. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Can someone testify to that today? I said if the Lord be for us, then who can be against us? Amen. What a glorious presence of God, Brother Chris, I feel in this tabernacle today. I feel a special unction of the Spirit of the Lord to do great things. Uh, he's walking down these aisles right now, reaching out for us. He just wants to know, will we reach out to Him by faith? Uh, the simplest of faith can touch the hem of His garment. And we can be more than healed today, but we can be made whole or complete can somebody say praise the lord to all of you that are in attendance today and to those of you that are maybe visiting our service maybe for the very first time can i simply say welcome to calvary church a place for new beginnings this is a place that god has so ordained where the Spirit of the Lord is, it's been said already, there's liberty. We've come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And if you would stand on your feet for just a moment, not for me, but for the precious word of the Lord. I'm so glad that we have God's word. Can somebody say amen? The lifeline, the truth, the only thing exalted above the name of Jesus is the word of God. Amen. I salute each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the gift of your time today. I know that you could be anywhere else, worshiping with any other church, being with any other body of believers. But you made a cognizant choice today to be in this house, worshiping the Lord with us in spirit and in truth. I'm so grateful for that today. I'm going to be looking at scripture today in 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. And uh, if you have your Bible or your iPad, or if you'd like to just simply look on screen with us, and uh, let me read this into your hearing today. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. It says, the Lord is not slack. I'll stop right there for a minute, just for posterity. The Lord is not slack. That means he's concise. That means he's articulate. That means there is a intelligent design in God. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Somebody needs to breathe a heavy sigh of relief. Because boy, do we have many promises from God. Can somebody say amen? Is anybody here today standing on a particular promise from God? Healing, power, restoration, glory, financial blessing. He's not slack concerning those things. As some men count slackness. But he is long-suffering. Now that's King James vernacular for the fact that he is incredibly patient. 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 We'll talk a little bit about the Lord's patience here in just a moment. He's long suffering us to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's the perfect will of God. If you want to know what's the will of God for me today, you don't have to wander in the wilderness another service 
come to repentance because the will of God is that all men come to repentance. So if you want to be in the will of God, just repent. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take about 30 seconds right now before we move into this service, Brother Rowan, and we're just going to repent. I don't know if you need somebody to, you know, repent first and you repeat after me, or I think it's more sincere if we repent on our own. Amen. So we're just going to lift our hands. We're going to say, Lord, I'm sorry for any sin. Sorry of any offense. Sorry of anything that I've done that is unlike you. Because, Lord, to be righteous, we must be blameless to stand before you as blameless. So see our heart, God. If I've offended a brother or a sister, if, I, if I've done anything untoward towards Scripture or the Word of God or, or toward you as my Savior, I'm sorry. And I ask for forgiveness. Now let me tell you something, folks. If we, just as people, as individuals, are asked to forgive 70 times 7 in a single day, how much more do you think our Heavenly Father is waiting perched on the balcony of heaven for us to say I'm sorry so that his blood can be a covering his forgiveness can overshadow us and we can walk out of here today with clean hearts and clean hands does anybody here today want to walk out of here with a clean heart clean hands boy that's me that's me honey that's what I want so I want to talk about this for just a few moments. Your provision is already prepared. Your provision is already prepared. If the Lord of glory, Angie, knows our need before we ask, but yet we compound the fact that we have told the Lord a thousand times what we need, that I don't think he's, I don't think he's asleep or on a journey or that he's not mindful. I'll tell you right now, Brother Brad, if my kids tell me one time they need something, honey, I'm on it. Then if daddy's in here, Jim, I know you, Brother Ma, I know you. If your kids came and said, I, Daddy, I need this, you own it, right? We're going to be like the Lord. We're going to have to be on it. Coach, we got to be on it. Amen. I've left you standing far too long. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. Your provision is already prepared. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, for some of you today who have never heard me preach, you're going to go, well, that was interesting. And for those of you who know me, you're going to say, well, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> and uh, nevertheless, <laughs> I, I love what this scripture says is that the Lord is not slack. He's no slacker. You know, if you give it to God, you can depend on God. If you, if, if, if you pray about it, you can trust to whom you have to do. If somebody say amen to that. There are some here today to have resorted to becoming what I call Treadmill Christians. There was a season in my life, although very brief, that I joined the gym. I'm not a total fool. I'm not a total idiot. I have been to the gym. I have even joined the gym. I know what a treadmill is. I don't really understand what it can do, but I know what it is. I would get on it and I would adjust it to, to, uh, to my speed. I would adjust it to my speed, Brother Larry. And I found out that uh, my speed is very fast because I hit the wrong button a time or two. And I, I want you to understand about kill me. I was running on that thing, dare not stand still, because I've seen videos of it shoot people completely off the back end of that thing. So I'm running like thunder, Brother Jimmy, on a treadmill that I have no idea how to slow that thing down. And I weigh just a little too much to push myself up 
and let it ride itself out. I was begging for somebody to unplug that thing. I was crying for help, but nobody heard me. But some people like treadmill Christians. Those who are walking with God, but never getting where they want to go. Coming to church, coming to prayer meeting, they, they praying about something. But you can pray to your purple if you don't trust who you're praying to. Trust what you're praying for. Trust the foundation wherein it's built. If you don't trust the purveyor of the promise, you're a treadmill Christian, honey. You're just walking, walking, walking. You say with God. But if you don't trust God, you're not getting anywhere. Whoo, boy, that went over big. It's all appeal from here now. Okay, y'all stay with me. All right. I believe that there are some who are continually asking God for something that you want to see, but you're frustrated and you think God has not or will not bless you with what you ask. So let me ask this. Are you asking for what you need according to God's word? Are you asking for something that's honorable, noble, that the Lord would want you to have? Are you like a little kid that goes in a, in a supermarket instead of asking mom and dad for like some yogurt and some bite-sized carrot treats? You're over to candy aisle trying to get a whole bag of Jolly Ranchers in your mouth. Before your mama comes by. You're asking for the thing that you don't need. You ask for the thing that might hurt you. Then you're mad because you don't get it. Whew. I told you it's getting better. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay with me here. I've told you about, you know, going to the refrigerator and asking for uh, somehow or another. We, we, it, was, it was one of those times when we must have got our income tax back at our house. You know, we didn't have much until we got our income tax back. Got income tax back, mom and dad go to the store and they buy a whole jar of olives. Now, some of y'all hate olives. But to all the olive lovers, would you raise your hand? Love. Oh, oh, stuffed olives. My goodness, heavenly days. I was just a kid. And I'd go over to the, to the, to the refrigerator and I'd open that door. And I'd, eh, eh, I want that. I want the odd bit of little, and I, you know, I was barely big enough to talk, and I'd point, and that's what I wanted. And they'd give me one or two, and man, it was the greatest thing to slice bread. And, and then I just wanted more, and I wanted more. But you know what? Uh, uh, Mom and Daddy understands that if you eat too many of them olives, you're gonna get a stomachache. Especially if you're in the uh, diaper phase of uh, perpetual care. They're not gonna give you many olives. And if they do, they understand that they're going to have to circle the wagons here before long. Because here it comes. Y'all stay with me. My mean old mom and daddy wouldn't give me what I thought I wanted. What I thought I needed. So I just waited till mean old mommy and daddy wasn't looking. And I went in there and I got me that jar of olives. And I managed to unscrew the lid on that thing. I sat down in the floor of the kitchen. And honey, I, I was going down. I was going down in that jar about elbow deep because I was little. I was going way down in there. And I was just dropping them things, you know. Shane, it was awesome for a few minutes. <laughs> Mom and daddy come in. Over half that jar of olives was gone, Brother Williams. And they knew right where it was. They knew right where it was. It was too late. I had already imbibed on too much of a good thing. And, and, and I didn't follow the plan. I didn't follow their instruction. They knew if I had too much of a good thing, I couldn't handle it. 
Do you understand our Heavenly Father understands this as treadmill Christians? We keep walking with God and never get where we want to go. Sometimes we're not asking for the right thing or we're asking for too much of the same thing or too much of, uh, of the wrong thing. God knows our need before we ask and he is not slack concerning his promises. He knows how much is just enough, how much is too much, uh, how much we ought to have, how much is going to bless us and how much is going to ruin us and look bad on him. Amen? Oh, well, there you go. God's never late. He's always on time. Some say, well, I just don't understand God. Well, who does? Are you waiting on me to translate the mysteries of the cosmos to you? Are you waiting on me to tell you all the intricacies about a heavenly father that's a glorious Almighty, all-seeing, all-knowing, heavenly, celestial being that knows everything from the beginning to the end. Honey, that's above my pay grade. All that I have is this road map right here and what he's given us. And I know that's the truth. So this is all I know to preach. It comes right out of this book. If I come up here and start reading out of Life magazine, y'all can get up and walk out. If I come up here and start reading out of any other book other than the book. You need to run out of here. Don't walk. Run. I don't understand God fully. I say in chapter 55 verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Sometimes we trust. We spend a lifetime Trying to think like God thinks. Think like he would reason. Think like he would do. When in reality, that's so far beyond our ability to think exactly like he would think. In every aspect of our life. Because he's the divine choreographer of our lives. He knows what we need today. So that 10 days from now will be in alignment from what we need 10 days from now. And then 10 days from now will be in alignment with what we need a month from now. And then if we fulfill his will through obedience to his word a month from now, six months from now, we'll still be on the path. And if we're walking that path and we get off the treadmill and start trusting his word instead of just walking, we walk by faith and not by sight. Before long, a year goes by, two years go by, our children come up, they start living for God. I look down and little Bubby is over here with Camille and they're jumping up and down and they're dancing and and they're worshiping and they're praising God because somebody believed, believed. We're not designed to fully understand God. I want to put that fire out right now. That's why a relationship with God, Brother Jim, is a trust relationship. I'd like to bring it down to where we live for just a minute. But Jim, I'll pick on you today. That's all right. I love you. You're a good man. You are married to a beautiful, talented, amazing, gifted, lovely lady. Would you agree? With louder. Would you agree? You could stand or something or applaud. I don't know. I'm trying to help you out, bro. But let me say this, as awesome and cool and lovely and beautiful and talented and gifted and anointed as she is, do you understand her? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The, under, the, the, the not understanding meter is going off over here, honey, if you, did, if you couldn't tell. I've been married a little redheaded thing right over there for about 45 years this year. And she's amazing, lovely, wonderful, all those things. But to understand every aspect is an enigma. It is. So what I have learned to do, Brother Chris, I just trust it. If she says or wants to do or has something on her mind, I just trust that. Because we got this far 
45 years down the road this far, we're still together. We're still in a good, wonderful, powerful, strong relationship. And the reason we're there, Brother Brent, is because we trust one another. Amen. So if you want to get off the treadmill of doubt, of just walking with God and never going anywhere, and get on the path of trust and of faith and of hope and of belief, you will start seeing, you'll start seeing your provision is already prepared. Acts chapter 12, perfect story. Peter's in prison. The people at the church hear about Peter being in prison. You've heard me preach on it before. He's in jail. The people at the church start praying. They pray day and night. All of a sudden, in the midnight hour, great light shines down upon Peter as he's asleep in the stocks and the bonds. And the chains fall at the feet of the apostle. Now, I'm telling you, no one just unlocked it with some magic key. They just fell off of him. Even Peter, he who had the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Salvation's message in the book of Acts had the greatest key known to man. When those chains fell off of his hands and feet, what did he do? Did the Bible say he leaped up immediately? He began to dance and shout and rejoice. No, he just sat there, looked down at the chains that fell off his hand, looked down off the chains that fell off his feet, and in total disbelief, totally, total denial, total doubt that he would ever make it out, he never made a move. Okay, so here's where we're going to go with that. How long ago, how long ago were you incarcerated were you in chains? Were you doubtful about your future? Were you walking the treadmill to the gallows of life? How long has it been for you to sit in prison by thoughts, words, deeds of others, doubt in the, doubt in the future because of mistakes in the past? How long has it been since you were imprisoned by those things and in a service or at a meeting or in your home in your prayer closet, miraculously, those chains fell at your feet days, weeks, months, years ago, but yet you're still sitting there in the chains. You need to think about that for a minute. I'm not going a step further, Brother Knight. I'm not going to do it. God is still God. He has all power in heaven and earth. He's not slack. He's not anemic. He's not weak. We talk about it all the time. The battle is the Lord's. We talk about it today. If God be for us, who can be against us? We talk about it today. You know, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. How long ago did God already answer your prayer to be delivered, but you're still sitting among the chains? That's a hard question to answer, isn't it? Amen. God wants you to do what Peter did, and that's get up, start moving. In Jesus' name, out of the jail, out of your situation, out of your sickness, out of your doubt, out of the bad relationship, and start moving toward the light. In Jesus' name. Peter got up, but not until an angel slapped the fire out of him. For the night, I don't want an angel have to come slap me for me to do the will of God. Does anybody here want God to have to knock the living thunder out of you before you do what is right? I don't need that in my life. I done suffered enough things. I don't need God to come down and send an angel and, and knock the snot out of me. 
for me to get a hold of it. People were sitting there among the chains, couldn't believe it. Angel said, get up, let's go. Peter just sat there. He said, yoo-hoo, it's me. I'm 12 foot tall, giant, brilliant light, waving a flaming sword. I just cut them chains. Come on, son, let's get up, let's go. And Peter just looks at the chains, looks at the, at the, at, at the angel of the Lord. He's staring his deliverance right in the eye. Somebody today in this service, your deliverance is here, right here, right now. And with the piercing eyes of a loving Savior, he looks within the windows of your soul, right down to your heart of hearts. And he said, if you would only trust me, if you would only believe me, if you would only stand up, if you would only start walking by faith and not by sight, if you would just trust what my word says, uh, trust what I told you in prayer last week, last month, last year. Come on, somebody. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Amen. Peter got up, went out, went to the prayer meeting, beat on the door. Somebody got up, went to the door, looked out the door, and there is Peter fully delivered. What did they do? Run out on the porch and hug his neck and say, praise God, the Lord has answered prayer. No, they slammed the door in the face of their miracle. Not understanding that their provision had already been prepared. They ran back in and said, listen, y'all won't believe what just happened. Why don't we purpose everything we're supposed to believe with y'all wouldn't believe it? Why don't we purpose everything that we should have faith for by, you know, I, I just can't believe it happened. I, just, I can't believe it. How many years would we have already been ahead if we had just started believing it like we don't believe it? Are y'all with me for a minute? I'll wrap this thing up. It's okay. Okay. Young girl goes to the door. She looks out there and there's Peter standing there in the flesh. She slams the door in his face, goes back in and says, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, quit praying, quit praying. Peter, stand. There, there's somebody at the door. And he says the name of Peter. And what does the church do? They rebuke the believer. The church doesn't stand with solidarity. The church didn't stand with this eye witness of the glory of God. Why do we have testimonials on Celebrate Sunday like Cameron who stood here valiantly proclaiming a woman who had cursed him before looked at him and said, you look like somebody that could help me. You look like somebody that might could pray for me. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. I'll say it again. Everybody in here ought to Put their arms around that young man. Pat him on the back before he walks out of here. You know why? Because I believe he has enough faith to stand before this congregation and proclaim that if God be for us, who can be against us? Then we need to encourage faith like that. We need to encourage young men like that. We need to encourage somebody who's willing to tell their story. Lo and behold, and it, 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 right, I mean, just staring in the eyes of their miracle. They doubted. We got to understand this. Our provision is already prepared. The infinite Lord of glory always hears. He always answers prayer. He just doesn't always say yes. But he always answers. Even though we keep asking for the same thing. Often we're just frustrated with his timing. Because he is a prayer answering God. Okay. Hudson, Hudson, would you help G. Paul for a minute? Okay. We're going to move around a little bit. All right, come over here just a second. All right, turn, turn right around here. Look out there, and then we're going to go over there so they can see us for a minute, okay? All right, here's what I want you to do. It's not very hard, but you've got to be willing to do it. 
over and over. And you've got, you got to interrupt me. It's the only time you get to interrupt without getting in trouble. Because G. Paul said, G. Paul said, okay, are you ready? I want you to say loudly in this microphone, all right? I want you to say, I want you to hold it. And I want you to say over and over, G. Paul, will you give me that gift now? Can you try it out? Look out G. Paul, there. will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? Just keep on. G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? G. Paul, will you give me this gift now? Give me this gift now. G Paul, will you give me this gift now? G Paul, will you give me this gift now? G Paul, will you give me this gift now? G Paul, will you give me this gift now? G Paul, will you give me this gift now? Okay, I want you to like kind of come over here now because they they get to see you over there. All right, come over here and just kind of get kind of mad about it. G Paul, will you give me this gift now? G Paul! G Paul, give me this man now! Do that several times. Come on! G Paul, can you give me this gift now, now, now? Now! Give me this gift now! That was so awesome. You know what often happens is we think that God didn't hear us. We think the Lord didn't hear our first cry, our prayer. He doesn't answer, He doesn't hear our prayers. So we feel like we have to perpetually be on the treadmill of relationship where we state the same thing, the obvious over and over and over and over again. And the whole time all we're doing is getting on God's last nerve. And Brother Brent, the only way that that could have been compounded is if we had been in the car riding down the road. And I was doing something very important. Me being the, the metaphor for God in this story, but I, I'm certainly not him. But, you know, I'm already healing somebody else. I'm already speaking to somebody else. I'm already anointing someone else in the ministry. But yet I'm hearing that perpetually. Like I'm not trusted. I'm going to skip two pages of this message. And you're going to thank me for it. There you go. Just like that. It's like Paul Harvey. Half of y'all don't even know who he is. The only thing worse than somebody. I don't call it praying. I call it nagging. Nag praying. Nag praying God. Who I'm fixing to be very unpopular. I'm fixing to be very unpopular for a minute. God is not slack concerning his promises. That was our text. I've come to say it's all right to ask God more than one time for something you need or desire. But recognize in the asking, in the praying, that you've got to give it to God, lay it down, and trust that he is able. Because God has already provided the provision by his word. For somebody, Peter is already standing at the door. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open that door, I'll come in. Come on. Do you want God to come into your situation? Do you want God to come into your healing? Do you want God to come into your marriage? Do you want God to come into your relationship? He said, I'm standing at the door knocking, honey. Just open the door. I'll come in. 
Man, I don't want God to stand on the front porch of my promise and never deliver. It's not God not delivering. It's often us not opening the door. Amen. You can be seated. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. Here's where I wrap. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, you've heard me say it before. I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered to the heart of a man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Your provision is already prepared. We've heard this scripture preached a thousand times. If you've been in church over 20 years, I know you have. But I will say this. We may have heard it preached right, but we have believed it wrong. I'm talking about true believers in this house today. This scripture is not ter- talking about living a life on earth, holy, acceptable, right before the Lord, then going home to be with the Lord before these things transpire in our life with God. This is not referring to eternal Reward as much as some people would like for it to be. Although I fully believe in eternal rewards. I believe in a mansion, streets of gold, walls of jasper, a gate of solid pearl. I believe in all those things. The scripture, if you put it up again, it simply says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. In King James vernacular, the word hath means already. Already. We're not here. Now listen to the logic of this. Are y'all ready with me? Would you go with me just like a couple minutes? Would you please? Please, I'm really nervous now. Please. Here we are. We're living for God. We're doing good. We're coming to church. We're givers. We're witnesses. And in, in, in that, God has the angels of heaven and he has a full he has a full construction crew of angels and he says okay they're doing good y'all go ahead and pour that 24 karat gold slab over there all right and start putting those solid sterling silver beams up in that mansion and and, and y'all start building that mansion now because they're doing good Y'all hear me? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there, you may be also. If it were not so, I would have told you so. In my father's house, it doesn't say we are building many mansions. (laughs) Are many mansions already completed? Many mansions. He doesn't start building your mansion. And then you doubt or you make a mistake. Or you fail God, or you fail your fellow man, you fail to repent, and then him send a spiritual APB to that construction crew of angels and say, wait a minute, halt production. Don't put up another beam, don't build another room, don't do another thing on that mansion. Let's just wait till they get it all figured out. Wait till they get it all straightened out. Let's just wait until... They're blameless again. Y'all with me? Well, all construction stops. Our promise is in limbo. The promise that God promised us that I go to prepare a place that where I'm there you may be also. It's all on hold until we're good enough. But by His mercy and by His grace and by His love for us, He nurtures us and he leads us back to the foot of the cross. And we do like we did at the beginning of this message. And we repent before God. And he forgives us of our sin. And for those that haven't been baptized in his precious name. We're baptized in the name of Jesus. For the remission of our sins. And then we receive the gift. 
Maybe it's that gift that Hudson was talking about. Can I have that gift now? Can I have that gift now? Can I have that gift now? You can have that gift anytime you ask for it. Anytime you ask, you don't have to ask a thousand times. The Bible says, ask and what? You shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Would you stand with me? Some think that this scripture applies to eternal reward. Nothing could be further from the truth. Although I believe in an eternal reward, I believe that everything that we can't imagine, we can't fathom, I have not seen nor heard, neither has it even entered into our heart. The things which God has already prepared for us to them that what? Love him. Would you close your eyes? All you've got to do is make up your mind. Are you going to love him? Will you love him? Will you love him? Will somebody love him today? Will somebody just start loving him right now? Come on now. Do you understand your salvation has already been paid? The ransom has already been paid. Your healing is already paid for by his stripes. We are healed. Not we will be healed or we will possibly be healed. If we're good enough, we'll be healed. If we're strong enough, we'll be healed. It says we are healed. How long will you sit there with the chains at your feet before you get up and walk out of the prison of doubt? You say, well, I'm trusting God for a, the right man or the right woman. I want you to know right now, you don't have to petition God one more time. Because way back in the first book of the Bible, the Lord said, God saw man and so, so it wasn't good for him to be alone. Trust God knows exactly who you need. I don't mean nothing to nobody that's not looking for a spouse. But for somebody who is, it means everything. So let me say this. Your spouse is coming. They're going to walk right through these doors not many days hence. You know why they haven't walked through yet? It's because somewhere in the country, they're working a good job. They're going to church. They're faithful. They're doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Because God don't make no junk and he ain't going to bring you some dog of a woman or dog of a man. He's aligning that proper person to where they have climbed to a certain level of faith that God acknowledges. Then what the Lord's been doing over here in the North Texas area is he's been jockeying, maneuvering somebody out of their position into another position in Atlanta or Charlotte or L.A. or Kansas City. You ain't waiting on God. You're waiting on that person to transition to their new position. When they transition to their new position, the boss that's looking over your spouse is going to say, hey, we got a brand new position available over there in Dallas. And we want you to move over there. And they're going to say, hey, listen, I've been looking for a change. I've been looking to do something in your will. They move over here. Then they start looking for a church. Then they walk through those doors just like I said they would. Do we believe this or not? Come on, do we believe God can or not? Amen? And I'm not going to have to come over and tap you on the shoulder and say, there she is or there he is. It's going to be all hearts and flowers and cherubim. The whole thing. And you're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know. If you've got a financial need, God already knows about it. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to, your, to his riches and glory. If you have a barren womb, hear me. God has already prepared a child for you. Whether you conceive this child naturally or he causes someone to give you their child. 
God makes no mistakes. He loves you. He wants you to be whole and complete in Him. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. If you have a lost son or daughter, they're, they're coming back to God. Would you trust that with me? I said they're coming back to the house of the Lord. God's timing is perfect. His restoration is complete. Amen. Somebody needs to understand today that while we are yet praying, Peter is already at the door and our provision has already been provided. Would you lift your hands with me right now, Jesus, in your name. Now, if you're seeking God for something in particular, instead of uttering that provision, God knows the hearts of men. I want you to come right now. You're seeking something from God. You've been seeking it. You know who you are. You know, it's not an indictment. All of us are seeking something from the Lord. At least I hope we are. Why don't you come right now? We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your faith that it does not waver. We're going to pray for your faith that it's enhanced today by the word of God. You need something. You're trusting for something. You're desirous of something. Maybe you've told God a number of times. Now it's time just to come and stand in God's presence trusting him. The Bible said having done all to stand, stand. I'm not asking you for spiritual calisthenics. I'm just asking you to come down and stand. I'm even going to ask you for another, uh, another layer of faith. The closer that you get to the front will be a, a sign, a barometer of faith to God. So I want you to come. And if you feel to press your way all the way to the front, that simply says, okay, God, no more repeating myself. No more repeating my petition. I'm trusting you. We have a family right here in Jesus' name. Trusting the Lord for good things. Trusting the Lord by faith. Why don't you come and take a stand with them? Why don't you come right now, church? Would you believe God? Come on, pastors, preach just a straightforward message. Get off the treadmill and get on the path. Trust God for what you need. He knows our need before we ask. Would somebody come right now? I said, would you come right now? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now by lifting your hand, you simply say, okay, God, I have faith. I'm going to believe the word of God. I'm going to believe the message that was preached. I'm going to have faith and believe you, Lord. You know my need before I even ask. So I'm trusting you for it. I'm trusting you for it. I believe in you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Come on, God's you word is true. God's word is true. You turn it for good. Yeah. You take what the enemy meant for me, evil, and you turn it for good. Jesus, in your name. You turn it for good. Would you make your way up to pray for these that have come? You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you drive.